delighted to have you here for a discussion as part of our legacy series. In 2012, we initiated a series on legacies, those who contributed in terms of leadership, be it in policy, economics, business life, or humanitarian affairs. And we were very delighted to have launched that in the fall of last year, and we're delighted now on its one-year anniversary to have with us Kim Young duk who is a very uh, interesting, uh, influential, and informed thinker. He has meant a great deal to the Korea Society, not only for many years, really now for several decades. And we're very grateful to have him here today to discuss his legacy and what he has done and his ideas about Korea-U.S. business relations. And we'll begin actually with his personal experience. And uh, uh, Dr. Kim grew up under Japanese colonial occupation, uh, under Russian occupation, and then uh, the North Korean regime. And wondering, YD, if you could tell us a bit about those early years and your memory and how that became formative. Yeah, uh, uh, that's a very good question, actually. Uh, when you think of it, uh, uh, I was born you know, under Japanese rule, of course. Then actually, in 1945, uh, I was very tender, 11 years old, grade fifth of public school. I think the biggest thing I always remember was uh, I couldn't use Korean language at school, and I couldn't use Korean name at school. So I think whole family, I think that was kind of government policy, I guess, Japanese colonial rule. Uh, we have to change to Japanese name. So my name was Kanemis Eidok instead of Young Dok Kim. Uh, so that uh, I remember uh, from uh, those years, uh, Japanese rule. And in particular, I think that later affected me because I couldn't learn any Korean language at mm -hmm. the public school. So I'll get into that maybe probably later, how it's affected my life. Uh, then 1945 came, of course, Russian soldiers came in, you know, uh, to disarm essentially the Japanese soldiers. That was the purpose. So that's the first encounter for me to meet Europeans or foreigners. Uh, of course, we met some Chinese before, but when you say, you know, uh, uh, European origin. And that was very interesting experience. I learned few, you know, Russian word, just like uh, in South Korea, they say, give me in English, right? Mm -hmm. Tawai is a uh, give me uh, ex expression. So, uh, uh, but I think they, they stayed only a uh, year or two. They all retreated, uh, not, not much memory. But I think soon after, uh, after they start leaving, you know, North Korean, Kim Il-sung came in, of course, uh, North Korean communist government is start being formed. And uh, uh, first thing they did was, of course, you know, uh, uh, Christians and landowners, you know, they have to prosecute them. So I think uh, we were not big landowners, but uh, we were a Christian family, and we owned a small kind of sardine factory, which is you know famous uh, in Changjeon, where my hometown was at that time. So we left 1947, early spring. Uh, we had to come to Cheolwon by train and cross the 38 parallel, and came to came down. To South, we become ever since I'm, I become refugee. Mm. So that's the story of all years. If we could move to 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 really your uh, your corporate career then, and, and uh, your early efforts in business, uh, you're a trained gen trained engineer, right. um, <clears throat> and uh, and you stepped uh, uh, away from Korea at a time when when the idea of global Korea wa was uh, you know very much in its infancy. Mm. Right, and uh, as soon as you know, I got into Seoul University uh, Engineering School, mm -hmm. uh, 1953. Uh, actually, uh, this year is the 60th anniversary. We just had a 
big uh, celebration for the armistice. And the same year, 1953, I uh, graduated from Koje High School, mm. where during the Korean War, we, we were taking refugee there. And uh, the reason I, I took engineering was, I think, one of the uh, uh, minister of my uh, Christian church was the Moon Jae, Reverend Moon Jae Rin, who happened to be father of Moon Yee Kwan. Uh, whole family came from Yeonbyeon in uh, Manchuria and very uh, devoted and well-known uh, Christian family. And he suggested that one day, you know, uh, Korea is devastated by, by war, so there must be lots of opportunities, mm. you know, for reconstruction. So she said, civil engineering is the best maybe mm. for you. But I didn't know what was civil engineering. And, uh, but I took uh, examination somehow, uh, I got in. I think in a normal year, uh, I, I don't think I could get in, but uh, that was right just uh, before the ending of the war. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot, you know, I, I was lucky. Mm -hmm. But uh, because of that, I got the civil engineering degree and uh, I had the opportunity to serve in the Korean Navy as a civil engineering corps officer for five years. Mm. So from 58 to 58 to 63, the, uh, essentially that's the first experience as a professional, as a civil engineer. Mm -hmm. uh, that's another, I was very fortunate going to the Navy, was the Navy is the one which has a traditional, from even Japanese times, uh, all those uh, Navy civil engineering tradition was kept. So all the civilian civil engineers worked for Japanese Navy, stayed on. So when I uh, joined the Navy, you know, I was put in a uh, higher position. And under me was uh, uh, 10 or 15 year more experienced civil engineers. Mm. So I learned a lot from them. And uh, fortunately, after a couple of years, they suggested for me to go to U.S. And uh, I was ready to, you know, to get out of the Navy and uh, do some for the graduate work at that time. Uh, but I think the opportunity was there. So I went to U.S. Uh, there was a, uh, a U.S. Navy Construction Battalion Center. They called CBs mm -hmm. uh, in Port Warnemi, California. Mm -hmm. And CBs are very well known uh, because, we, I mean, when I go out at night in a Port Warnemi uh, bath, it, even the Marines shy away, you know, mm. because CBs, construction battalion, uh, US construction battalion was a kind of uh, front, front runner of the all those during the uh, World War II invasion phase. Mm -hmm. They'll go first, put the bridge on, you know, mm -hmm. set up the bridge. They'll put the uh, uh, temporary airport, you know, so lots of sacrifices. But mm -hmm. uh, that was very interesting experience while I was there. I heard all those big stories. Then I uh, spent a year there. Uh, studied uh, construction equipment management mm -hmm. and uh, also design of nuclear shelter, which uh, was really needed at that time uh, for from During Korean Korean, yeah, uh, Korean Navy uh, perspective. Something takes you to the Middle East and you meet Chung Ju Young, etc. Well, uh, before that, with the Canadian company, I already spent two and a half years in Greece. We were mm -hmm. building uh, largest the three dam, you know, uh, uh, Osfield dams in Europe, mm -hmm. uh, we were designing and cons constructing, and uh, I was a part of the uh, consortium team. So I was in charge of rock mechanics. You, mm -hmm. uh, so I spent the two and a half years, you know, before actually coming down to US. Mm -hmm. And uh, before that, I went to Peru, also some highway project, and many, many projects in US and Canada.
Mm -hmm. uh, then I came down to U.S. As soon as I came down to U.S., uh, they were looking for somebody, some senior, who was really experienced enough to send to Aramco, Saudi Arabia. Because mm. uh, you remember 1973, uh, 74, oil shock, sure. you know, and... Uh, you know, Saudi Aramco is one of the richest company in the world. They mm -hmm. had all the money and they were building all the infrastructures they couldn't build for maybe a thousand years. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they were building and they need somebody uh, to oversee, uh, set up new specifications and uh, uh, many engineering areas. So they, uh, in a foundation area, since uh, my company, uh, Musa Rutledge was uh, the best known in the world at that time, mm -hmm. was a U.S. company. So they asked them to send some senior engineer. And uh, some of my colleagues, uh, the very uh, experienced colleagues, they didn't want to go at that time. And mm -hmm. uh, I was the a natural choice. And, you know, one day uh, my boss said, are you interested? Go if I doubled or even tripled your salary mm. and uh, one month's uh, paid holiday for your family. Mm -hmm. So apparently that was Aramco's uh, mm. uh, suggestions. That's mm -hmm. how I took the, that job. So I ended up in Aramco. Uh, as soon as I ar uh, arrived at Aramco, I was rewriting most of the uh, construction specification related to my, my field, you know, foundations. I'm specialist on foundations. Mm -hmm. Anything under the ground, anything you don't see, mm -hmm. they are mostly are, uh, all the engineering problems do exist, as a matter of fact. For mm -hmm. construction companies, that's where you either make money or lose money. Mm -hmm. So it's a very uh, important area. And uh, I was uh, asked to review uh, Arabian Gulf, particularly uh, they were building all kinds of oil uh, loading and unloading or oil production facilities, etc., uh, mostly done by Brown and Brown and Root of uh, mm -hmm. Houston and McDermott of Houston, American companies. So I was reviewing all those data for for a year and writing some specifications for other projects, etc. Then one day, I heard that some Korean company here and there and landed one of the largest harbor project in the history of, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, $1 billion. I'm selling this, you know, it's a rough figure, $1 billion, but uh, $1 billion means a lot because 1975, if you look at uh, maybe search for Google or Korean government, uh, you know, uh, budget was a little over $2 billion. Now, Korean government uh, budgeted like 320, 330 billion dollars. So in relation to that, almost like a, this project cost was half of Korean government budget. And uh, so Saudi government wouldn't uh, sign the contract without uh, the you know, guarantee of the Korean government. Mm -hmm. So uh, apparently Hyundai, uh, Mr. Chung Ju Young, the founder uh, uh, were able to get the uh, President Park Jong is uh, okay. So uh, Foreign Exchange Bank, you know, uh, issued is the guarantee for that project. So that's how Hyundai landed. But the only problem was Hyundai, technically, uh, just pure size and pure uh, enormity and. There are some technical complications, but uh, uh, Hyundai never did that kind of project before. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, particularly loading and unloading over uh, oil and chemical products. You know, five super tankers are coming all at the same time. In the uh, water depth, water depth is not that bad, about 100 feet, you know, 150 mm -hmm. feet. And uh, so, as far as Hyundai is concerned, they signed it, but apparently uh, uh, Chung Ju Young couldn't sleep mm. because uh, how to tackle that that project. 
True. And uh, somehow, uh, I ended up, you know, in Saudi, sure. <laughs> and, and, Saudi and, and, Arabia, in the right time and, and you know, and right place. Sure. Right place, we often call. It. So I think, I often think that somebody said it's a miracle that, you know, you were there. And mm. uh, I often said, is it really a miracle? Mm. It, it, and you said, you know, <clears throat> Chung Ji Young was a great risk taker, and, and then he sees in you uh, uh, a Korean American. Really, I mean, you said he first identified you more yeah. in that sense. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was a Korean American, and uh, also first PhD mm. in engineering, Hyundai ever took. Of, of course, later when they started electronics, you know, they hired hundreds of them, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, sure. uh, so I, I was a very unique position. That's why he didn't know what to do with me, uh, what position he can give me. Uh, for, uh, former uh, President M.B. Lee was in president. He was mm -hmm. you know, much younger than me, uh, very uh, able, you know, uh, president. And so, first he said, oh, you become my technical advisor. Mm. So, I started with the technical advisor to him. And uh, it was very, uh, he needed somebody like me because she was meeting you know, uh, head of the state or head of the big corporations all the time, but he needed some who can speak English with a technical background, you know, he can mm -hmm. speak intelligently. So I just came in, it was convenient for him. So I played that part of role a little bit, but most important thing is I was probably uh, just right guy to help them to solve the technical problems of that Jubei Industrial Harbor. You're an individual then who has uh, dealt at an earlier age with, with dislocation and, and issues of, of the challenge that the colonial era meant and the war years meant. Um, you have an adaptability. You've then gone and, and traveled uh, both through your education and your early professional life to, to the four corners of the world and, and uh, been very much an explorer. Uh, you have one of Korea's early corporate mavericks, Chung Joo Young, sees in you, you know, somebody who's not only uh, brilliant, but also an explorer and perhaps a maverick as well in some ways. Uh, and uh, you're a specialist, you're a CB who lays bridges, and you're a specialist who knows foundations. Uh, and so then you take that into corporate life here in America, and you also then spend most of the last 30 years working at enhancing, in your own way, uh, Korea-U.S. business understanding and laying a foundation for understanding and cooperation. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if you might tell us, before we turn to a few questions, how right. that all yeah. came together and, yeah, and I think, what your, what your yeah, perception was like. I think from that like. Juvere experience, what I, one thing I did do something for Hyundai was I started new business, offshore, engineering and development, which means uh, for oil and gas exploration and uh, design of platforms and fabricate and install. Often uh, you all know that uh, when you see on TV, you know, big platforms, oil, gas platforms in the middle of the ocean and, you know, flare, gas flare coming out, that's the field. At that time, uh, 81, 82, only some U.S. companies and European companies were in that. Mm -hmm. Japanese were ready to start, wanted to get in. And I talk, made a proposal to Jung Joo Young, and he, as I said, he is a forward-looking and risk taker. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, when he sees it's right, sees the opportunity. He really uh, moves. That's how we started that business uh, in offshore, you know, uh, oil exploration, gas and oil exploration, uh, because they had a big shipyard. And uh, now, you know, I can uh, proudly say that I think that, that business, design, fabrication, and installation. Uh, of offshore uh, oil and gas exploration, Hyundai, Samsung, and Daewoo, whatever Hyundai does, 
Samsung and Dell always follows anyhow. The, the other way around now in the electronic area, I guess. Uh, is the largest share of the uh, business in the world right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I don't think anybody can compete you know, with the Korean company. Uh, just like shipbuilding, is a shipbuilding mm -hmm. business is the largest, Korean shipbuilders are the largest in the world. So is this offshore uh, oil and gas uh, mm -hmm. Production, but the, coming back to uh, what you you said, after that I came came back to uh, U.S. Hyundai Corporation USA, which is essentially a trading company. And at that time, you know, when I came back, uh, Korea was relying on almost like 30, 40 percent mm -hmm. of total Korean trade, depending on U.S. Mm -hmm. <coughs> This year, if we look at the statistics, only 10%. Mm -hmm. China now has a 40% share. Mm -hmm. But at that time, the, there was a big issue, you know, anti-dumping mm -hmm. and the countervailing sure. and the product liability sue. So Korean companies are having a tough time. Mm -hmm. But 40% of our total trades coming from U.S., it was very, very important for the you know, market. Even now, even 10%, uh, we have a saying, you know, among our, all the Korean companies, in the, as a matter of fact, in the market, anything tested in U.S., you can sell much better any other place oh. in the world. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole frame of mind of the Korean, mm. uh, Korean companies, because we have to come to U.S., test the, the market, consumers, because the toughest market, we founded uh, Korea Chamber of Commerce, U.S. Mm -hmm. So I was, uh, I was first two terms, I you know, uh, served as a president. And since then, I think uh, the coach arm become really uh, effective, mm -hmm. you know, lobbying, sure. not only lobbying, but I think the organization for collective, mm -hmm. you know, effort by all the Korean companies in the U.S essentially uh, closely working with the U.S. Korea Business Council. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we are, uh, I think that organization is doing uh, very well to enhance, you know, uh, U.S. Korea business uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. Particularly, you remember, uh, you know, 2010 FT, uh, U.S. Korea, you know, free trade agreement. I'm sure Korea side played some role too. Mm -hmm. Korea Chamber really played a key role, sure. you know, to uh, pass that. I'm serving as a lifetime advisor now, but still, I'm not very active. But I think uh, trying to attend, you know, some of the meeting a few times a year. Fantastic. We did want to thank you. We thank you for your positivity, for your life story, and for your contribution. Uh, not only in the corporate community, but for all that you've done for Korea-U.S. relations and moving enhanced understanding between the peoples of Korea and the U.S. Uh, this officially concludes the, uh, the taped portion, uh, but we thank you and we invite all of our visitors back uh, for upcoming events. Uh, please see us at koreasociety.org, and if you're not a member already, we'd love to have you join us. Thank you, Dr. Kim. Thank you.